to God, Father, you are welcome in this place to be exalted, be glorified, be magnified in our midst, praise God. Yes, Daddy, you are indeed welcome, 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 welcome. Praise your mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, welcome, 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 welcome here to Impact Church. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good, he's faithful, and he is worthy to be praised this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. God is faithful and he is indeed worthy to be praised. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of all exaltation because there is none like our God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, my name is Robert Brooks. And of course, uh, my wife Mignon and I are in this great place of Ashburn, Virginia, pastoring this great church, Impact Church, Nova located uh, here in this fine city, and we just know that God has something extraordinary in store for you today, and we just want to say hello, 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 and thank you for joining us today. I uh, want to say hello to all of our uh, Impact family who's out there, and want to say hello to all of those who are uh, have been watching us and tuning in with us from uh, other states. We just thank God for you. Thank God for everything that you're doing, and those who have remained and stayed connected with with us here. And to anyone who may be watching us for the very first time as well online, we just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. And I just want to give you a big hand, a big round of applause. I know you're not here physically to hug your neck, but we thank you for joining us on today. Praise God. Well, I believe once again we uh, have a due season word that God wants to bless us with. Uh, so just want to have you go ahead and uh, agree with me in prayer. Uh, in this moment at this particular time as we just thank God for what he's doing in our midst in Jesus name. Well, Heavenly Father, we say thank you once again for another grand and glorious day. We thank you for what you're doing in our midst. Uh, we trust you as always for freedom of, uh, freedom and of utterance, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we trust that you will rest these lips in clay. I ask that you increase in me as I decrease in the flesh. I thank you, Daddy, that it's all of me and uh, all of you and none of me that any man or woman would see here on today. I trust you, Father God, to, to speak through me what you desire to be said, minister to the hearts and minds of those who are watching us on today. And we just give you praise, glory, and honor in advance and say thank you for all those who will be born again, uh, individuals who will come into the knowledge of the truth, those who may rededicate their lives and see burdens removed, yokes destroyed because of your anointing and your word. So we say thank you once again. We give you free reign in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Well, God is indeed good, and I believe he has extraordinary things in store for you and I. Amen? amen. Praise God. Well, I don't know about in your area, but the last couple of weeks uh, here in the in the DMV area or Northern Virginia area, uh, it is, has been blazing hot. In fact, you can probably go so far as to say heat wave. Uh, I've spoken to friends and individuals and uh, Florida and Arizona and other places, and we've been experiencing just as uh, high temperatures as many of them have. And, you know, even throughout the Midwest, where I'm from, Michigan, uh, same thing, just excruciating heat, large uh, uh, temp temps out there. So I trust everybody is staying cool on today and has been staying cool throughout this week. And we just plead the blood of Jesus over you as well. Well, I believe uh, what I'm supposed to talk about today is uh, I'll give you the title in just a moment. Amen. So I hope you're enjoying your summer. Um, you know, I know that this is the time of the year that many people are traveling and reconnecting with family and uh, hitting the beach, doing all those different types of things that they can do to recharge. Uh, but I just wanted to just step out and, you know, kind of remind us as uh, members of the body of Christ and uh, just as the people of God, we want to make sure that we don't unhook totally. We don't unplug from the things of God, from the house of God. Amen. Uh, I, I saw a post the other day where someone was saying that, you know, now that uh, shots are available and things of that nature, and we know God still is covering us in the blood of Jesus. He said, he, you know, he was saying to his peers, he said, please, can everybody begin to come back to church? <laughs> so I just thought it was an interesting thing, but I want to encourage us that as we're enjoying our summer uh, this year and we're getting back into this uh, swing of traveling and having fun, that we want to make sure that we stay locked in, plugged into God Almighty. Amen. 
So let me go ahead and just read a verse of scripture for you. I want to have you turn with me, if you would, over to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And of course, uh, throughout the course of this message, I'll read from a couple different versions. This particular scripture, we're going to read from uh, what we call the Amplified Classic Bible. And uh, I believe it just serves it, serves it uh, gives it much justice, and it really brings to light exactly uh, what the writer is saying here. Uh, so we're going to pick up in verse number 1. <clears throat> Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 1. And he says, since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that we have heard. He says, lest in any way we may drift past them and slip away. So he's talking about, you know, these different types of truths, talking about this awesome gift of salvation that God has given to us, talking about the glory that's upon the father and the fact that you know he was made to be higher than the angels etc cetera, etc cetera. so he says a whole lot of things over in chapter one but he says hey since all this stuff is true we got to make sure that we're paying closer attention than ever to all the truths that you heard he says lest in any way we drift past them and we slip away so this scripture is a reminder for you it's a reminder for me that we want to pay close attention to every spiritual truth that you've heard so how, what's a better way of saying it? Everything that you've heard, everything that you've learned, everything that you've seen with your own eyes by way of manifestation of the word of God, we want to make sure that we're staying lockstep with those particular things. We want to have fun this summer. Praise God. Woo! Come on. We want to have this uh, fun this summer. We want to have fun every summer. We want to have fun, praise God, 12 months out of the year because God has created us to be joy-filled. Come on, somebody, to be able to have fun. Uh, so, But we want to make sure that we stay connected to the things of God. And I thought it was interesting that the writer Hebrew says here that we want to pay close attention or more attention than ever to some of these spiritual truths. He says, because if we don't, we can let them slip away. And we understand that to be true. So uh, I, I give you a natural truth. So we talked about how hot it is. It's uh, here one the other day. We were getting up into the hundreds. I tell you, before I moved up to Virginia, I didn't know Virginia got into the hundreds. But praise, praise the Lord, we have been there. Amen. 99 degrees, 98 degrees, right on the cuffs, feeling like 105, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been hot. So but let me give you a natural truth. Uh, one of the natural truths that many of us are familiar with is that your body requires X amount of water. Come on now. Amen. So water is good for your body. Water also acts as a cooling agent to help cool down your body as it helps to hydrate you. And as a result of that hydration, now when you begin to sweat which, and perspire, which helps to cool the body, praise God, it's not an issue for you. So we know in a natural, water is something that we have to have. And we understand that that is a natural truth, praise God. So we direct our lives accordingly. But guess what? In the summertime, we don't let that slip. There's nothing more refreshing than a nice cold, you know, soda or a nice cold glass of water on a, on a hot summer day like we've been experiencing. But we don't let those things slip away. In the midst of having fun, in the midst of going to the beach, in the midst of reconnecting with family, et cetera, et cetera, we do those things that help to keep us refreshed. Come on, somebody say refreshed. Right. Amen. We do those things that help to keep us refreshed. And we do those things that naturally make sense. So today, I just want to remind us that as we're enjoying this season of life, once again, we don't want to uh, unplug. We want to stay refreshed. We want to continue to live our best life. Come on, somebody. I'm not saying don't have fun. We want to live our best life. But one of the ways that we stay refreshed is also by allowing the spiritual truths that we heard, that we've learned, that we've seen God manifest before our eyes. We don't want to let those things slip away. We want to keep those at the forefront of our mind as well. And as I, uh, as I believe to be true, if we do that, we can expect God to do something big, something supernatural, something tremendous in our lives. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let's go over to Proverbs chapter 3 really quick. Proverbs chapter 3. I love what he said there. He said, we don't want to let any of these spiritual truths slip. So I, I guess I can go ahead and give it away. I think the title of my message today will just be Summer Refresher. 
Because during this particular time, I'm not going to talk about something that you may not have heard. So it may be a refreshing or uh, as we have in school, sometimes you get a refresher course to teach you or remind you of what you've already learned. Well, I think over the summer, just as he said, we don't want to let certain things slip. So how do we not let them slip? We refresh ourselves. We keep them at the forefront of our thinking. We remind ourselves of what God has said, because as we talked about a few weeks ago, the gifts and promises of God are yes and amen. Glory to God. So God has placed these promises in place. God has given us his word, these spiritual truths to help us live, but we don't want to let them slip. Because it's now high time to have fun because things have begun to open back up. Come on now. Praise the Lord. So let's go over to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. And I want to throw this one out there. It says in verse number 19, the Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. And by understanding, he established the heavens. So let's read that one more time. He says, by wisdom, the Lord has founded the earth and by understanding, excuse me, he has established the heavens. Now notice what this particular scripture says there. It says the Lord by wisdom has founded the earth, which tells me that wisdom is a big deal. He says the wisdom of God was right there with God on God present when he founded the earth and then as a result of that even understanding helped to establish the heavens now I'm going to give you a definition for wisdom and I'm, I'm saying some are refresher but I guess I can even coin it you know for this particular week because we want to talk about this I probably spent a few weeks just talking about those things that will refresh us and keep us where we're supposed to be over the summer and those things we don't want to let slip. So we can just say this summer refresher is something big. Amen. So what's that big thing? That big thing is the wisdom of God. So wisdom by definition, the 1828 dictionary says it's a faculty of the mind or uh, it's the faculty of discerning or judging what is the most proper and useful and most conducive thing for prosperity and happiness. It is the thing that's most conducive to prosperity and is most conducive to happiness. And it is the thing that's most proper and most useful for each and every one of us. Big things happen when the wisdom of God is exercised on the front end or at the onset or whatever it is that you're starting. Amen. So whatever it is that we're starting out in, whatever direction God is sending you, whatever he's told you to do, whatever your new job or career path may be, seeking and getting the wisdom of God on the front end, front end can be a world of difference of anything and everything else that you're doing. If God sought it a big enough deal to ensure that wisdom was present and understanding was present at the foundation of the earth. And yet that's probably the biggest thing or the biggest deal that's ever been conceived in our lives. Obviously, it has to be a big and important thing that needs to be present as we venture out to do great things. Amen. God has something great for you to do as well. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take you to another scripture just to show you once again the importance of wisdom. So I want you to go over to First Kings chapter three. First Kings chapter three. Glory to God. Somebody say it is time for God to do something big in my life. Amen. The start of something big is happening for you right now. And I'm submitting to you that the start of that thing, whatever the thing is, has to be with wisdom. It's a very important thing. Now, I want to take you over to first Kings chapter three. I want to show you one of our uh, Bible uh, characters and one of the individuals in the Bible. You're familiar with him, I'm quite sure. His name is Solomon. He's the son of King David. And we understand the Bible tells us that David was a man who was after God's own heart. And even as we're about to re read here, God says some interesting and great things about David. But I want to really showcase what Solomon grasps from all of this. So in verse number five, God has already been talking to Solomon. And he says to him in verse number five, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask, what shall I give you? Now let's pause right there. Now, 
most of us probably have something that we've been desiring to have. It may be the secret desires of our heart. Maybe we haven't uttered it or said it to anybody. And if God were to come to you and say, what is it that you can act that? What is it that you shall ask of me right now? Whatever it is that you ask, I'll grant and give you that thing right now. Some people would immediately go to the house that they've been standing for. Some people's mind would immediately go to, you know, the, the, the family member they've been standing, standing in agreement with for healing. Some people would immediately go to the ex vacation that they've been considering, that particular thing that, that they've been uh, uh, dreaming of. But Solomon's mind doesn't go there. It doesn't go to anything material. Solomon's mind goes to a place that's somewhere that most of us wouldn't have fathomed at that particular moment. It says in verse number six, and Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant, David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and an uprightness of heart with you. He says, you continue to show this great kindness to him. He says, because now you are making me his son king in verse number seven. He says, he says, but I am a little child and I don't know how to go out and I don't know how to come in like my father David did. He says, so there's still some things basically Solomon is saying that I need to learn and I need to understand. So now remember the, the starting question was Solomon, your father has done all the right things. You're now next to be king. Whatever it is that you want, just tell me and we'll make it happen. So let's pick up right here in verse number eight and let's see what Solomon says. He says, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people too, and they're two numbers uh, to be counted. He says, therefore, this is what I'm asking. Give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I might discern or may discern between good and evil. He says, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? Now, verse 10 says, and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Why? Because Solomon didn't say, Lord, give me a Maserati or make sure that, you know, you fill my coffers up with gold. All the silver that's in the West and that's in the East, I submit, I, Lord, let it all be mine. That's not where his mind went. See, I think somewhere along the way in this uh teaching that Solomon had received in his life, he saw enough in his father, David, to realize that money and some things weren't the best thing or the most important thing. See, I think, I think David spent enough time with God. And as you read, you know, the Chronicles and, and see David's life, you see that David was a person, as we said, was after God's own heart. So exactly as God did it, David was attempting to do it. Glory to God. So let's keep reading here. It says in verse number 11, it says, then God, to say, then God said to him, he says, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have you asked riches for yourself, nor have you asked the life of your enemies. Somebody would have did that. He says, but you've asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. He says, behold, I have done according to your words, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. He says, and I've given you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among all the kings all of your days. <sighs> Solomon didn't ask for something like silver and gold. He said he didn't even ask for his enemies' lives. Solomon said, give me a wise and understanding heart so that I can properly navigate and minister to your people. There's something about wisdom that is, when it's attained on the forefront or attained in the middle, it is the start of the greatest kings and the wealthiest king there was known to mankind. All because he asked God for wisdom. Praise God. Now, there's this old saying that we say, 
why I want to say same, but you may have heard this before, and I've said this to many young people before, is that you never want to get or allow your, your, your gifts and your talents and your money and all that to take you to a place where your character can't keep you. Well, guess what? The ability to be able to, to, to maintain everything that you received and all the blessing that you're walking in oftentimes is a byproduct of the wisdom that God has given you on the front end. There's nothing like the wisdom of God. It is absolutely the start of something big. Now, one great thing about this is this is not just for Solomon. This is for each and every one of us in the room, each and every person sitting in your household, each and every person you're connected to, because God says, if you want the wisdom, I'll give it to you. See, James chapter one, and we'll look at that really quickly, says in verse five, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. God wants to give each and every one of us the wisdom necessary to succeed in what it is that he's called us to do. And all I'm submitting to us is that God has given us these refreshers, these spiritual truths. And he's saying to us, as, have all the fun you want to have. Engage, do this, do that, go here, go there. But don't let the things that are important slip. Amen. Now, I'm going to close it out this way. I'm going to give you a couple uh, refreshing truths as it relates to wisdom. And I said it before, and we'll repeat it again. It's the key to starting something big. So go over to Proverbs verse number four, or chapter four. Proverbs chapter four. When you get there, shout, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Now, Proverbs chapter one, or chapter four, rather, says this in verses five through seven. And we'll read it from the King James, New King James Version. And of course, you've heard this before and you may not have known where it came from, but these, this is the scripture address that points to this particular thing. And it reminds us that we have to let the main thing be the most important thing and not take a back seat to everything else in your life. Amen. So he says in verse number five, get wisdom, Proverbs chapter four, get wisdom, get understanding, and don't forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. He says, do not forsake her, talking about wisdom, and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. And then many of you have heard this before. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all of your getting, get some understanding. God is saying to us right here that we want to make sure in all of our understanding we're not only, we're getting some wisdom. We're ensuring that we are putting the main thing as the main thing. So what does that say for me? Or what does that should say to you? That means we, we may have to allow the Father to reshape our plan for our lives. We may have to consult God on the clarity necessary and the, for the next steps in the direction of wherever it is that he's taking us to. We may have to take a step back and say, Lord, you're the one who teaches me how to profit. So I'm opening up my heart to the wisdom of God to be able to allow me to flow and walk out this thing the way that you desire for me to walk it out. He says, it is indeed the principal thing. The principal thing means it's the most important thing. And once again, it is a key to starting anything big, anything that will matter, anything that will be sustaining or enduring in your life. Think about businesses. When you look at a business that's uh, sustaining, that becomes an enduring Fortune 500 company, what happens? They start out with a business plan. That plan is initiated based upon some level of wisdom. And as, a, as they walk that out, it allows them to get to where God wants them to be. Praise God. Wisdom is indeed the principal thing. So in all of your uh, getting, make sure we get some understanding and allow the wisdom of God to work for us. Now, Proverbs says this as well in chapter 24. I'm going to read verses 3 and 4 for you. You don't have to turn over there if you uh, I'm going to read it rather quickly. But it says, by wisdom, a house is built. And through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, 
Its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. So the question I ask us as we read this particular scripture is, what are you building the foundation of your life upon? See, the foundation of our life just can't be based upon, you know, our educational uh, um, uh, our educational career or just based on, you know, uh, what mom said or what dad said. The foundation of our lives has to be based upon the word of God. It has to become and be the principal thing if we want to get to where God wants us to be. And even as I'm going off and I'm celebrating and I'm having a good time and I'm turning up and I'm enjoying my summer because, you know, we weren't able to enjoy summer vacations and all that stuff last week. That doesn't mean I stop having devotion. That doesn't mean I stop having prayer time. That doesn't mean I stop seeking God for his wisdom and direction for my life. See, because our lives should be lived in such a way that the moment I wake up, I should be ready to give glory to God who has breathed life into me. What are we reminding ourselves? That as long as we live, we don't want to let the spiritual truths that's prevailing in our lives slip or drift away. Have all the fun we want to have. Do all the things you want to do. Live your best life. But our best life is the one that includes Christ at the center. Y'all remember that song? Jesus at the center. Amen. Jesus at the center of it all. And as long as we keep God at the forefront, Christ at the forefront, praise God, we'll, and we'll endure and we'll receive all those things that God always intended for us to do and receive. Ask him for direction if you need it. Ask him to refresh your situation, praise God. The wisdom of God is necessary. Another refreshing truth I'll give us with respect to wisdom is understand that true wisdom comes from God. Amen? True wisdom comes from God. Now, I'll give you a scripture reference. You can turn there at your own leisure because James chapter 3 talks about two different types of wisdom. We're not going to go over there, but it talks about wisdom that's kernel, but then it also talks about wisdom that comes from above. Praise God. So read that at your own leisure around James chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. But I want to direct you over to Proverbs chapter 2. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 2. Somebody say, today is the start of something big. Amen. God always has fresh wisdom for us, fresh revelation knowledge for us of his word. As long as we're coming back to the table, coming back to sit in the master's uh, presence day after day, week after week, God will fill us up, fill us up, and fill us up. Glory to God. Now, true wisdom, of course, comes from him. And Proverbs chapter 2 reminds us of this. Let's look at verse number 6 and 7. Talking about spiritual refreshers. It says, for God, for the Lord grants, here it is again, wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest, and he is a shield to those that walk with integrity. Praise God. The Lord is the one who grants wisdom. The same way God gave Solomon wisdom, God will give it to you and I if we simply ask and are open to it. He says he grants a treasure of common sense to those who are honest. Now, I love that particular translation because sometimes I remember my mother used to say to me, it's great that you all have all that good book knowledge, but I need you to operate with a measure of common sense. Somebody else might have heard that before growing up as well. Book knowledge is great, but we want to have this common sense. And that common sense comes from on high. God will infuse us with everything we need to know, everything we need to understand if we allow him to. One scripture says that God will lead us and guide us, the psalmist wrote, with his very own eye. You may not know what the answer is. You may not know how you should handle a situation. But if you yield yourself to God, he'll give you the wisdom to have the right outcome that you're seeking and you're desiring to have. God is indeed our guide. The Holy Spirit gives us that direction. Another scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 26, it says, God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to all men uh, who, is, who are good in his sight. God's heart and desire is to give you 
wisdom and to give you knowledge. And he says, if we're lacking it, simply just ask for it. It is indeed the start of something big. Now, think about it this way. Let me give you a brief example of that. So think about an architect. One of the very first things he or she does is they draw and lay out a successful plan for what it is they're building. What I'm submitting to you that once again, in order for that foundation to be stable, in order for things to go the way you want it to go and be able to build upon it, it starts with that inquiry and wisdom that God has already placed in your heart, praise God. If we're seeking that wisdom, we're leaning upon that wisdom, things will go well. Lay the solid foundation. The scripture told us that wisdom is the principal thing, which means just like a foundation of the building, it is the most important thing. And without that foundation being stable and being what it needs to be, that building will not be able to stand the course of time. Wisdom is very important. We want to make sure that we're tapping into it and it comes from God. And thirdly, I'll leave you with this. I said I was just going to give you a few because these are refreshing truths as it relates to wisdom. We got to remember that wisdom also pays great dividends. Wisdom will get you where you need to be and have allow you to attain what you want to attain. So let's like to look at two more scriptures and we'll be done. Proverbs chapter 8. I hope you're getting something out of this. I hope it's a good refresher for you. And I'm going to tell you my intent as well. It's just as the word says to bring about that refreshing. It reminds me of those little drinks you, you, know, you have at Starbucks. I think one of them is actually called a refresher. They're not big. You know, they're going to charge you like $6 for a little 10-ounce 10, 10 drink. Amen. <laughs> but what does it do? On a, cold, on, a, on a warm summer day like we've been experiencing, it brings about that quick refreshing that's necessary to allow us to go further and succeed in what it is that we're called to do. Now, Proverbs chapter 8 says this in verse number 17 and 18. He says, I love those who love me, and all those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me. Are with who? With wisdom. He says, riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. Praise God. Enduring wisdom, uh, uh, riches, enduring honor is right there with God. And when we embrace the wisdom of God, the dividends will always be great. God knows what it is you're attempting to accomplish, how it needs to be done, how it should be done, and he's the one who can provide all the answers necessary to get you to where you want to be. Now, I love it says here as well, wisdom keeps us righteous before the Lord because when we're operating in the wisdom of God, it will allow us to curb our tongue. It'll allow us to uh, uh, reshape our thinking because some of the things we may think, some of the things we may want to say, the wisdom of God will catch us and go, hold it, don't do that, don't say that, don't go this particular way, don't go that particular way. It helps to keep, to keep us in a righteous place where we don't find ourselves once again slipping or drifting off. Now, Proverbs chapter four, I'm gonna take you back over there and we're gonna close. And it says in verse number eight and nine, we're going to read that in just a moment. Give you just a moment to get there. Talking about the wisdom of God and the encouragement once again is throughout the course of these summer months, don't let it slip. Don't get on too much of a break that we take a break from the things of God. God still wants to hear your voice. He still wants to talk to you, still wants to commune with you. He still wants to worship with you, praise God. So we want to stay locked in to what God is doing in our lives. Now, I'm calling in a refresher because, you know, also as well, I said, well, Lord, the Lord told me, do some refreshers. Because I've been pastoring long enough to notice that oftentimes what happens in the summer months is people do exactly what I'm talking about. We're having fun. And as we're having fun, we forget that God is still there. He's still walking with us one in spirit. He hasn't left us. He hasn't forsaken us, but he's waiting to hear our voice. We don't want to turn off our relationship with God, but we want to continue to have fun, but bring him into that midst, uh, into our midst as well. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, I thought it was good to talk about it during the summer because 
I don't want to go off on something deep, you know, these last couple, next couple of weeks, like talking about the Holy Spirit or, you know, as soon as we come out in the fall, I want to go into a series about prayer. But I knew I couldn't talk about that now because it's too important, too vital. And I don't want, again, those things to be missed because somebody let these little spiritual truths or huge spiritual truths slip. Proverbs chapter four. I think you're back there now. We're going to close right here. Verse number eight and nine says this. If you prize wisdom, she will, oh, I love this, make you great. <laughs> Embrace her, talking about wisdom, and she will honor you. Wisdom will place a lovely wreath on your head. Wisdom will present you with a beautiful crown. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, wisdom pays great dividends in each of our lives. Wisdom is the thing that brings forth promotion. Wisdom is the thing, the start of it, that brings forth the favor of God. Wisdom is that thing that will bring forth the glory of God in every situation for you. And as the scripture said in, earlier in chapter 4, in all of your getting, let's make sure that we're getting wisdom so that we can get some understanding and walk in the requisite knowledge that God has presented for us because God wants us to live our best lives not just for us, come on now, but for somebody else we love and somebody else who's watching you. So often we think it's just about us and God is blessing you with all of this knowledge, all of this wisdom, all of this great understanding. No, but our responsibility is to do exactly what the name of this church is, is to now then have an impact in the life of somebody else because of the wisdom that you gain the knowledge that you gain, the understanding that you gain. And as a result, you, your family, and those whom you encounter, lives will be forever changed and absolutely blessed. Praise God. I want you to go ahead and just stand to your feet with me. Right there in your living room or wherever you may be watching, if you're able to do so, I want you to just go ahead and stand to your feet. And go ahead and lift your hands towards heaven if you would. Go ahead and close your eyes. Just take this quick moment here before we sign off to just thank God for how he's blessed you, for the wisdom and understanding, praise God, that you're walking in right now. Father, we thank you for wisdom from on high. We thank you, Father, for an infusion of revelation, knowledge of your word, for great understanding of your word of natural truths and spiritual truths. We make this declaration and declare on, on this morning that as we're having fun, as we're enjoying our summers, as we're living uh, this Zoe life that you've blessed us with, we won't forget about you. We'll respect and we'll thank and we'll be grateful for our time with you. We trust you for great deposits on the inside of us today and going forward to allow us to reach the place that you've destined and ordained for our lives. We trust you, Father God, for uh, uh, re re uh, rearranging and, nav and renavigating us to get us back on course to where you'd have us to be. We trust you, Father God, for stabilizing us, for uh, helping us stay engaged through any missteps, but we also trust you, Father God, for that outpouring that will take us over into that place you have us to be. We understand wisdom's the principal thing, and we thank you for it. We embrace it right now today as you refresh us going forward in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. And amen. Glory to God. We thank you, Father, for your spiritual refreshing. We thank you for your natural refreshing. And we thank you, Lord God, for the great things to come in our lives and in the lives of those who you allow us to touch in the name of Jesus. Now, if you're watching this today and you're saying, well, Pastor Brooks, I don't know if I'm born again. I don't know if I'm saved. So surely I don't know if I'm operating in wisdom. Well, I want to make sure that you know that you're sure today that you're born again, that you're saved, that you're certain that God loves you. Because guess what? The Bible reminds us that Christ died even for the ungodly. Christ died so that every person would have an opportunity to receive him as his personal Lord and Savior. And he was reminding them in Hebrews chapter 2 of all of these spiritual truths that you understand and know with respect to salvation, with respect to who God is and how much he loves you. Don't let any of that slip away. So I want to remind you today that once again, here's your opportunity to come closer to God, to draw nigh to him, to once again 
have your names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if that's you, you're not born again, you're not saved, or you're not sure, I want to pray with you and pray for you before we sign off on today. Or maybe you're here and you're saying, well, Pastor Brooks, I've gotten away from God. I really have been having fun. But guess what? God wants you to know that's okay. He just still wants to be a part of your life. This relationship you have with the living God is just that. It's a relationship. So we want to make sure we stay connected. But if you've gotten connected, I want to help you reconnect with him right now today by simply just inviting him back into your life. So if any of those things apply to you, once again, we want to pray with you and for you. If you're watching this on, the, on online, you can go ahead and let them know in the chat that you're getting in on this prayer. But we want to pray with you and for you. So I want to have everybody, whomever's in the room with you, if you're alone, I want you to go ahead and lift one hand high towards heaven. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And we're going to invite Christ into your life. We're going to ask him for forgiveness. And we're going to thank him for wisdom abounding in our lives. Heavenly Father, go ahead and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, come into my life and change me now. I receive your love. I receive your wisdom. And I declare out of my mouth that I'm born again, that I am saved, and I've been forgiven. I trust you for propelling me into the next great thing. I trust you for revelation and knowledge of your word. I trust you for wisdom. And I know today is a fresh start of something big in my life. I receive your love in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. I want you to know that you're born again right there where you are. I want you to know that you're loved and the beloved of the Father. I want you to know that you are the apple of God's eye. I want you to know that wisdom is yours and God has great things in store for you. But I want to encourage you to continue to tap in. Don't unhook because it's sunny outside. Don't unhook because you now have more things to do and you're able to just move about a little bit more freely. Keep God at the forefront of your heart. Keep God in the midst of everything that you do. Stay refreshed in him. Now, I want to give you an opportunity to go ahead and sow into the kingdom of God before we sign off if you desire to do so. There should be a text to give number there on the screen. I want you to just listen to your heart. Of course, uh, no pressure whatsoever. So if you desire to give, the number will be there to do so. Uh, so as well to just follow that information. It should also give you some information that shows a little bit about our website as well. There's a prompt there, a giving page that allows you to do the same thing uh, if you're not comfortable with the text to give. So I know many of you have done uh, what God has placed upon your heart. I want to just encourage you according to Romans, uh, I'm sorry, not Romans, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, uh, that we just continue to honor the Lord with our substance. We continue to honor him with the first fruits of all of our giving, and we are excited about it, praise God. It is an act of our worship. So go ahead and agree with me in this prayer with respect to your giving. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. Our heart is to worship you in our giving. We thank you for everything that you provided for us and our households. And we pray that as a result of this seed, where more men, women, and children will have an opportunity to come together, have an opportunity to receive you as Lord, come to know the knowledge uh, of who you are and uh, feel the love, praise God, that you're depositing even into our hearts today. We trust you that all things are well with each household represented on today. We pray, Father God, that their needs are met with an abundance of side. We declare increase upon them and we bind lack and insufficiency. So we thank you for the gift that's being received today as it's planted in good ground here at Impact Nova. And we command the angels of God, go forth, prosper it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Now I tell you, this, this is not one of those messages probably that I have you running around the room, but I promise you, as wisdom is indeed the principal thing, just continue to rehearse it in your heart. Continue to feed on this word of God. And I trust you, the Lord will say something to you, perhaps that you might not have heard, perhaps you may have missed, or he will just refresh you in the way you need to be refreshed to go forward and do the things that he's called you to do. Go ahead and lift one hand towards heaven. Father, I declare upon your sons and daughters on today that once again, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is upon them in great measure. We trust you, Father God, that you're meeting their every need. We trust you, Lord God, that all things are indeed well with them. 
well with their household, and we're just careful, Lord, to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for the refreshing that's upon their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you, we love you, and I just want to encourage you, go forward and make an impact in the life of someone else today. In Jesus' name, God bless.